Hello everyone and welcome back. So far we have seen quite a few cache memory mapping techniques and we have also solved various numerical problems pertaining to all of them. So in this particular session we are going to have a comparative study in order to understand the distinctive natures of different kind of cache memory mapping techniques with the help of a constructive illustration. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Suppose we are provided with some data, there is a main memory of size 8 GB is given, the block size is specified as 2 KB and the cache is given of the size 4 MB. Now since the memory is byte addressable, we know we need to change all the units into their respective bytes. Therefore, the main memory size is going to be 2 to the power 33 in terms of bytes because 8 is 2 cube and gigabytes is 2 to the power 30. Therefore, for physical address, we will be needing 33 bits. Now coming to the block size, it is 2 kilobytes, which is in terms of byte is 2 to the power 11. Therefore, for block offset, we will be needing 11 bits. Now the cache size is given as 4 megabytes, which in terms of byte is 2 to the power 22 because 4 is 2 square and megabyte is 2 to the power 20. Now we can find out the number of cache lines dividing the cache size that is 2 to the power 22 by the block or the line size that is 2 to the power 11 which will give us 2 to the power 11 because 22 minus 11 is 11. Therefore, there are 2 to the power 11 lines inside the cache. Now let's observe what will be the physical address split in terms of direct, associative and set associative mapping respectively. Now we know for physical address we will be needing 33 bits and the block offset is of 11 bits which will remain the same for all the different memory mapping techniques. Now coming to the direct mapping, we already know there are 2 to the power 11 number of lines inside the cache. Therefore, 11 bits are going to be used for the line number portion. Now since we are dealing with direct mapping, we know the number of tag bits can be found out from the ratio between the main memory and the cache memory size which will give us 2 to the power 11 specifying the 2 to the power 11 main memory blocks will be mapped onto the each of the cache lines. Therefore, the number of tag bits is nothing but 11 bits. So, from 33 bits physical address, 11 most significant bits will be used for the tag, 11 bits will be used for the line number and the 11 least significant bits will be used for block or line offset. Now coming to associative mapping, we know for the entire block number we will be needing 33 minus 11 that is 22 bits. And since there are no restrictions about placing the main memory blocks into the cache lines, we also know that the entire block number bits will be used for the tags. Now let's talk about the physical address split in terms of set associative mapping. Now we also know that we can't really find out the PS split if we don't really specify the way in set associative mapping. Therefore, arbitrarily, let's assume it's a four way set associative mapping. Now, since it's a four way, we know every set is going to have 4 lines in them, that is 2 to the power 2 or 2 square lines inside every set. Therefore, the number of sets can be found out dividing the cache lines that is 2 to the power 11 by the set size which is 2 square, which will give us 2 to the power 9 bits, therefore 9 bits are going to be used for the set number. And finally, for tag bits, we will be needing 33 minus 9 plus 11 that is 20, that is 13 bits. So these are the different physical address split for direct, associative and four-way set associative mapping. Now let's try to find out the key differences with the help of these physical address splits, shall we? So this is the physical address split for direct mapping, this one is for associative mapping and this one we acquired for four-way set associative mapping from the same main memory and cache organization. Now we will have a prominent understanding of this comparative study with the help of this chart. As you can see, the parameters are kept column wise and the rows are there for different mapping techniques. Now coming to tag bits which is used for the identification of the main memory blocks inside the cache lines. In direct mapping, we are using 11 bits. In associative mapping, we are using 22 bits and for four-way set associative mapping, 13 bit tags are used. Now the number of the cache lines is a sole property of the cache that too depends on the size of the line or the block. And it has got nothing to do with the cache memory mapping techniques. Therefore, the number of cache lines will remain the same for all the different cache memory mapping techniques 
which we calculated to be 2 to the power 11. Now coming to the tag directory size, we know the number of tag directory entries will be as same as the number of cache lines are in there. However, the tag directory size altogether will vary because of the different number of tag bits in different mapping techniques. Therefore, for direct mapping, the size of the tag directory is going to be 2 to the power 11 multiplied by 11 tag bits. Now coming to associative mapping, the tag directory size will be 2 to the power 11 multiplied by 22 tag bits. Similarly, in case of 4-way set associative mapping, the size of the tag directory will be 2 to the power 11 multiplied by 13 tag bits. Now as you can see, the number of tag directory entries in every case is going to be the same. However, the tag directory size will differ because of the different tag bit size. Now let's talk about how many number of comparators we are going to need for different mapping techniques. Coming to direct mapping, we already know it's a very strict mapping policy. And for block identification, we are going to compare only a single cache line at a time. Therefore, for direct mapping, the number of comparators we will be needing is only one. Whereas, in case of associative mapping, we already have witnessed this flexible nature. That means, we don't have any restrictions on placing any of the main memory blocks into any of the cache lines. Therefore, for associative mapping, we will be needing 2 to the power 11 number of comparators because we need the comparators to be associated with all the cache lines and hence 2 to the power 11 number of comparators. Now coming to 4-way set associative mapping, we know due to the 4-way, every set inside the cache is going to have 4 lines in them. That means, we will be comparing only 4 lines belonging to the same set during block identification. Therefore, the number of comparators we will be needing for 4-way set associative mapping is going to be 4. So, to summarize, the number of comparators needed for direct mapping will always be 1. Coming to associative mapping, it will be as same as the number of cache lines are in there. And coming to k-way set associative mapping, it will be depending on the value of k, which is in this case is 4. Now, coming to the type of the comparators, it totally depends upon the tag size. Because comparing the tags associated to the cache lines with the tag field of the physical address, we can actually specify either the block's presence or absence inside the cache. So in this specific scenario, for direct mapping, we calculated the tag bits to be 11 bits. Therefore, we will be needing one 11-bit comparator. Whereas, in case of associative mapping, since the tag bits are of 22 bits, we will be needing 2 to the power 11 22-bit comparators. Similarly, for 4-way set associative mapping, the tag size is of 13 bits. Therefore, we will be needing 4 13-bit comparators. So, these are the differences of different cache memory mapping techniques. Nonetheless, do always remember that the number of lines inside the cache depends solely upon the cache's overall size and the block or the line size. So it has got nothing to do with different memory mapping techniques and that's why it remained the same for all of them. Now on a special note, we have already talked about set associative mapping as a combination of both direct and associative mapping's positive features. In continuation of that discussion, for a k-way set associative mapping, if the value of k is 1, that means every set is going to have a single line. That means every line is a set. In that case, it is as same as direct mapping. Because in direct mapping, every main memory block is mapped onto a specific cache line. On the other hand, if the value of k is n, where n being the number of lines inside the cache, that means there will be a single set which will include all the lines inside the cache. That means the entire cache will be a single set. In that case, it is nothing but associative mapping. Because we can place a main memory block anywhere inside the set which is nothing but the entire cache and that is fully associative mapping, isn't it? So do remember these facts. Alright everyone, that will be all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, we will solve few more previous year questions. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.